Hey everybody, Doug here, and I just got in one of Blackmagic Design's brand new HyperDeck Studio Mini recorders. Uh, these are a little bit in short supply at the moment. I had to wait for about three weeks to get mine after I placed the order, but it finally arrived and I've had a chance to play with it. So, so let's talk a little bit about uh, what I think of it, what's good about it, what needs to be improved, and uh, how it compares to some of the other products that are on the market. So let's first of all take a look at the form factor here. So this is in what Blackmagic is uh, kind of standardized on uh, some of their newer products. It's in a, the same form factor as their Terran X Mini converters, um, which means you can fit three of them side by side in a rack. In fact, later in the video, I, I will actually be mounting this in a rack. Um, I have one more coming, and I will probably be buying one more. I wanted to make sure to get one in and play with it before I decided if I was going to commit to these or not. So, uh, front panel, we've got two SD card slots. Uh, requires SD cards that are at least uh, UHS-1, um, but it prefers UHS-2, um, especially if you're working with, with 6 gig footage. Uh, so make sure, you, make sure your cards are fast enough. Uh, Blackmagic actually has a list on their website of what cards they've tested and certified. So I would recommend sticking to that list. Other cards may technically be fast enough, but they might not necessarily be uh, ideal. They might have weird circumstances mm -hmm. where they might glitch or whatever. So I would recommend sticking with the cards that, that Blackmagic has certified. I still haven't gotten any of those in. You know, this, it's a fairly selective list, and I didn't have any of those on hand, so I've got some on order. But I, I did have some cards laying around. They do seem to be working all right. And so for the testing that I've done, I've used those. I've also got some cards that I tried that absolutely failed, and I'll, I'll mention a little bit of that as we get a little later into the video. All right, back to the front panel here. All right, the nice thing about having two cards there is it will automatically alternate back and forth between the two cards as, as they fill up without dropping any video not even dropping a single frame. So the first car fills, fills up, as long as you've got a second card in there, it will automatically spill over to the second card. If the second card spills over and you've cleared off the first card or swapped it out with another one, it will then spill back over to the first card and you can keep doing that indefinitely. So as long as, as, long as you've got a computer nearby and you can archive the footage from a card off onto your computer's hard drive, you could actually record indefinitely with just a single pair of, with, with a single pair of cards. So any uh, two cards as long as they're sufficient uh, in, in speed. So, all right. Now, I've got the play, stop buttons, record button, and jog button. That t t uh, cycles or toggles between this, the knob over here doing a jog and, and a shuttle mode. All right, and then we've got previous and, ne and next track, and then menu and set. So you press the menu button, you get into the menu system. And you use the wheel to navigate between the menus. And then when you find the menu you want, hit set, scroll down to the option you want to change, hit, OK, hit, hit set again. And in this case, I'm actually going to do a quickly format this, this card. And so that's how you navigate the menu. Of course, it has the LCD screen on there. We're done formatting. So I'll exit out of here. And you'll see that I've got the video from my main camera here. Uh, it's being fed into that. And you can monitor that in real time. It actually has uh, pretty low latency. I was actually kind of impressed with how quickly the video is displayed on screen. You know, if I, if I clap, you should see that that lines up pretty well with the audio coming from my microphone. And then, of course, lastly, is the, the dial there. It's just, it's just a knob that you can turn. There's no press to click option on there to select. All selection is done using the set button there. All right. so. That's the front front panel, and let me just connect some cables here. I'm gonna turn it around and show you what the back looks like. Okay. All right, so here's the back. Of course, we've got power, and then there's an Ethernet, uh, but this Ethernet jack actually supports power over Ethernet Plus. And I'll demonstrate here in a minute how we can actually, I can actually remove power from the main power jack and still have it continue to be powered over power over Ethernet. Make sure it's, if you're gonna use that, make sure it's power over Ethernet Plus, not the not the original version. All right, and then we've got the uh, reference out and reference in. So if you're uh, gen locking your cameras, uh, it's your recorder. So you can hook that in there. All right, a remote in. That's an RS-422 jack uh, for standard deck control. An HDMI output. That just has an output, no, no HDMI input. And then we've got our SDI in on the bottom right, and followed by two SDI outs, an A and a B. Um, 
with normal standard footage, both A and B output the same signal. Uh, however, if you happen to have a video clip that has an alpha channel, say you've got a graphic that you want to overlay on top of your video, you can export it from your, from your NLE with an alpha channel in it, ProRes format, uh, 4444, say for example. Uh, put that card in the device, and when you play, it will output the fill on the A output and the key on the B output. So, and that way you can actually do full alpha transparency from playback on a card. All right. So, I mentioned briefly a minute ago, this is powered over power over Ethernet or over standard AC power. Uh, I should mention that it does not come with a power cable just like the rest of Blackmagic's products. But, uh, so, so here we go. I'm actually going to start recording. Nice some footage on there. So now it's recording. And then I'm going to pull the power, AC power, out of the back. And it still continues to operate because in this case, my switch that I'm connected to provides power over Ethernet as well. And likewise, if I put the AC power back in and then pull the power over Ethernet cable, it still continues to record. So in that way, it has effectively two power sources that it can run from. So that's a nice little advantage that, it's got, that it has there. All right. Now, um, this is very, in a lot of ways, very similar to the full-size HyperDeck Studio products that Blackmagic has, but there are some differences. Um, first of all, uh, the full-size units have a compressed, uh, uncompressed video option. This does not. Uh, this will not record uncompressed video. So if you need uncompressed video, you will need to get one of the full-size HyperDeck Studio products. And it's probably is obviously a sufficient speed SSD in order to record uncompressed video there. The other difference that I, I was a little bit surprised by is this does not support ZNX HD or DNX HR. Uh, the full size units do, and the video assist products from Blackmagic also do. This does not, at least it's not listed in the menu. That, it's possible it may be coming in a future firmware update, but as, as of right now, it only records uh, about four different variants of ProRes. And it's the only format that it will actually support. So um, there's also no HDMI input on this. The full-size uh, devices do have an HDMI input. This does have an HDMI out, but there's no HDMI input. I think what Blackmagic is, is intending to do with this is allow you to use this to run uh, like retail advertising signage. So you take your HDMI output on this thing, plug it into a nice big screen somewhere and just set this to run continually on, on the loop. Uh, on playback, if you press the play button on it, it turns on loop mode and plays the same file, the same, same video clip over and over again. Uh, also along those same lines, if the reference out on one of these is connected to the reference in on another device, they will synchronize up. And so the playback of all of the devi connected devices actually can be frame accurate. Uh, so if you have, say, two by two grid of screens, you could have four of these. Connect the reference ports, and when you hit play on one, the others will play back uh, frame accurate lock with, with the first one. Um, let's see, this also, as mentioned, it does have a second SDI output that can be used for a key when you're doing with an alpha channel. Uh, this supports PoE plus for power at the Ethernet port, which the full size units do not. This also has a built in FTP server. Uh, so if you were to have this mounted somewhere away from your editing bay, you could uh, actually upload finished video clips from the editing bay directly to the unit as long as they're both on uh, uh, connected networks. So uh, interesting use for some people. All right, um, so some of the pros of this thing. As far as I know, this is the cheapest six gig video recorder that's out there. Uh, I haven't seen any others that, that will handle six gig uh, at this price point. Uh, also, uh, since you can mount three in one rack space, you can uh, pack a lot more of these into a single rack, uh, three times the density of, of the other products that are out there. Uh, the PoE Plus power option is also a nice, nice thing to have on there as well. Um, in terms of SD cards, they, they do tend to be a little cheaper than SSDs. Um, 
SSDs may be a little slightly more reliable, but I haven't really had any significant problems with SD cards. The one thing to watch out for, though, is like you do you do want to make sure that you're getting the SD cards that Blackmagic rec recommends. Uh, the cards that I happen to have here, uh, stop recording. Uh, this one is a Lexar 2000 speed 64 gig. This is a UHS-2 card, and this is. Uh, not on their list, but it does meet all the other recommended specifications, and it has it has worked very well for me. It's worked perfectly. And the other card I have in here, which has also worked fine, is a Lexar uh, 128 gig, 633 times speed. I don't think this card would actually be fast enough for 4K, but it works just fine for for high def up all the way up to 60 frames per second, 1080 1080p. Um, some of the other cards that I that I've tried. I have uh, SanDisk Extreme Pro and uh, the 128 gig, and this one it works okay as well. Uh, in fact, I've actually ordered a handful more of these because they're a relatively inexpensive option. Interestingly enough, though, I have another card. This is in the Extreme Pro series from SanDisk. This one's a 32 gig, and for whatever reason, it does not work on this at all. In fact, if I plug it in. It's going to give me kind of a orange yellow light there indicating that it doesn't like the card. So there's nothing I can, I can do to actually try to actually use that card. It just doesn't like it at all. Uh, I've tried a couple other cards around here. I've got these, some of these Samsung. It's actually a micro SD. It's a 128 gig Evo series. Um, you plug it in the device and it lights up green for a minute and then it goes out as if the card is okay. But as soon as a few minutes, or even a few seconds after I start recording, it starts uh, blinking the record light, indicating that it's dropping frames, and so it's not able to write to that card quite fast enough. So if we give it here a few more seconds here, we should actually see it start blinking on us. Um, not, most of these cards, it's like actually, I think all of these cards are not. There you go. See, we just saw it. Uh, fail over to the first card because the first the second card is not fast enough. Um, none of these cards are actually on a, on uh, Blackmagic's official uh, web, uh, official list of supported cards, but um, like I say, most several of these have actually worked fine. It's been the, the 128 gig cards I have, and then my 64 gig UHS-2 card has also, has also worked fine. I have a, a Samsung 32 gig Pro series card here. And it's another one that doesn't want to work. Uh, this one, hold down the record button here to switch over to it. Press and hold, and it's supposed to switch over. There you go. So now it's recording on that card. And at some point, it will actually start dropping frames. In this case, since I have a second card in there, it uh, will fail over to the, the, that first card. So. Um, all right, uh, there's one other thing that, that Blackmagic added to this that I thought was actually pretty cool and that doesn't exist on the full-size products, and that's the ability to select how many audio channels are recorded. With the full-size, when you're recording ProRes, it always records 16 SDI channels, even if you're only using the first two, which can actually take up quite a bit of disk space. And so it's nice to be able to cut that back and say I only want to record the first two channels because those are the only ones I'm using. So this does have an option to do that in the menu, which I thought was a nice nice plus that I hope they bring to the full size units. Now, in terms of the cons on this one, um, it's only a six gig device. It's not a 12 gig device. And so it won't do 60 frames per second at uh, ultra high def resolution. Um, Right now, Blackmagic only has one product that does one recorder product that does that, and that's full-size uh, HyperDeck Studio 12 gig. Uh, there's also one little thing I don't like about any of the HyperDeck uh, Studio products. Uh, let's simulate it here. If there's any sort of interruption in the video whatsoever, it it stops recording. So if I pull the input, you'll see that it stops recording, and even when the when the video it returns, it doesn't. It doesn't pick up recording, um, which can be a bit of a problem. You know, I've actually experienced this quite a few times in in the real world. So, a camera battery dies, or a cable gets stepped on and unplugged, or whatever. And if someone's not paying attention, you you lose your you lose your feed on 
on the, on the recorder. I would really like to see Blackmagic fix that. And so if the video is lost, it still stays in record mode. It just doesn't write anything to the disc because there's no video to write. But as soon as video is restored, it starts a new clip and continues recording at that point. It's much better to have uh, a break in the recording than it is to have no recording whatsoever. So I really wish that Blackmagic would get that addressed on all of their recorders. That would be a great, great feature, feature to have. And then the last con I want to mention was that it, it is picky about it, the SD cards that you use. So you know, just trying a handful of cards that I had laying around, uh, about half of them worked and then half of them didn't. And of the half that didn't, um, some of them appeared to work at first and then ultimately decided that they were going to fail on me. So uh, it's de definitely recommend staying with Blackmagic's recommended SD card list, even though they tend to be a little bit pricey. So, and that's about it for the cons on this thing. Uh, overall, I do really like it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great unit. I think it's uh, quite well done. Uh, and aside from the issue where the video stops recording when there's any sort of video loss, even if it's momentary, um, I think it's a pretty good product. If they can get that, that one issue fixed, uh, not just on this one, but on their other HyperDeck products, then I would have basically no qualms with recommending this uh, for anybody needing a video recorder device. Um, so yeah, overall, let me give it two thumbs up. Um, before I actually wrap up the video though, I, w I did want to take just a, a minute and show what mounting uh, this on a rack looks like. So I've got here one of the Terranex Mini rack shelves, uh, the Blackmagic cells. And these work for obviously the Terranex Mini series. Uh, this unit uh, works for the new, the brand new switcher that Blackmagic just came out with. Although it takes two spaces instead of, instead of just one. Uh, and there's also the MultiView 4 that it works with as well. So, let's set that aside. And inside here we've got the rack, sh rack shelf itself. And then inside there there's the screws for mounting it. And then there are two blank spacers. So if you're only mounting one unit, you can, or two units, you can fill in the empty space with these false covers. I'll be using those this time. Is it this, at this time, uh, the rack mounting is actually very simple. So you take the unit, and I can even leave it plugged in here. Uh, set it in the shelf. And there's a little bit of a whip on the front of the recorder. You can use to wind that up, and then flip it over. And then from there, these two screw screw holes right here will, will line up. And so I'll grab a couple of screws. A screwdriver, put the screw in there, tighten it, not too much. Do the one in the back, and bingo, it's rack mounted. It's just that easy. And uh, because that mounts so well, so easily, I do highly recommend getting this uh, Blackmagic Design original shelf, even though there's some obviously cheaper generic shelves out there. And just This one works really well. So uh, overall, I think this is a great product. I'd just like to see Blackmagic address the issue of, the, uh, of it stopping recording if there's any interruption in the video. Uh, that would be a fantastic addition for not just this one, but their other HyperDeck products as well. If they can do that, it may be even better. So uh, if you do happen to buy any of these products, uh, I'd appreciate you using the links that are down below in the description. It helps to fund these videos. Uh, I do buy all this equipment um, on my own. And none of it's donated, and I uh, hope to give you a, a fair review. So I uh, appreciate any help you can give me there. Uh, also be sure and like and subscribe. I do try to put out these videos about once a week, though sometimes I do get busy and get behind. But I do, I do make the attempt to get videos, new videos out there once a week. And by subscribing, you'll be notified of those things. So uh, if you have any questions, be sure and leave them down in the comment section below. I do try to answer every one, even if the answer is I don't know but I will at least make an effort. So anyway, I appreciate you watching and we'll catch you next time. See ya.